Hello, and welcome to That's the Point, where we talk about technology stuff, and sometimes occasionally we talk about construction technology and concepts, and sometimes we go into the deep end, and that's exactly what we're doing today. My name is Corey Meyer, and in this episode, we're talking about a deep topic, and that topic is angular accuracy. How it works, why it matters, and how it relates to construction layout. So, getting started, we first need to define angular accuracy because this is something that comes up typically in the sales process or maybe when you're comparing different total stations that you have in your fleet, um, but it's the measurement that we use to talk about how accurate a total station is in the real world. And so, when we hear of a one second total station or a three second or five second total station, what exactly does that mean? So we, we know anecdotally and generally that the one second gun is more accurate than the five second gun. But hopefully after this video today, you can understand exactly where those numbers come from. So let's jump into this. The first thing we have to understand is why we use angular accuracy and why we just don't say, hey, this total station is accurate to within a 16th of an inch. Well, we don't do that because they measure very, very differently from how we're used to measuring. Like let's take this table for instance, and we wanted to measure the width of this table that I'm sitting at. If you had a tape measure, we would just pull a tape and we would say, okay, so it's four foot. And if I wanted to check this tape measure and check the, the accuracy of the tape measure, you could do a couple things. You could pull out another tape measure, maybe a better quality one that you trust, maybe a, maybe a survey one or a brand new one that hadn't been stretched, and you could pull that same measurement. And since it's point to point, you could verify that it did in fact say exactly four feet, or 48 inches. Now, the total station does not measure in the same way. The, the total station is actually staying, is actually measuring in space, right? So what the total station is, it's located somewhere, and it's gonna point, and it's gonna take a measurement in an XYZ in a 3D space, and it's gonna take a shot on the corner here, and it's gonna take a shot on the corner there. This is all done with distance and angles, and so we have to somehow quantify that. So instead of imagining that we're measuring the distance between two points, what we actually need to understand is that we're actually measuring within a tolerance range or a, kind of like a sphere. Now this is a scanning sphere, not meant for this. And if we imagine that this is the tolerance of a total station, I would just say it's greatly exaggerated in this illustration because the total station, as you'll see in a couple minutes, is ridiculously accurate. Um, this sphere is just for illustration. But when we take these points, it's better to understand that what we're actually shooting is if we put these sphere on the corner, on the, on the very point that we were trying to measure. And so you've got, you've got a little bit of area around there that you're gonna use for the angular accuracy. So that 3D space is why we don't just say, well, this gun is accurate to a 16th of an inch or whatever. We actually use the seconds. And so with this in mind, we can then talk about what a second is and how that drives your accuracy in the real world. So let's start with a graph. We have a circle here that we have 360 degrees evenly spaced. Now, in each of these slices, if we were to divide those 60 times again, we then get to the minutes. And then we take that really teeny slice once more and we divide it 60 more times and that gets us to the seconds. Now it's even hard to illustrate. I mean, it's such a small slice of the pie here that we're talking about. And that's the level of accuracy that we're talking about when we're talking about total stations. So suffice it to say, it's a really small slice of the circle, and then using a little bit of math, which we won't do here, but we can then calculate the accuracy at a given distance, or pretty much so a plus and minus, if you will, a tolerance. And so let's look at some examples in the real world, because as you get, and it's important to remember that as you get further out, you will see these distances increase. And as they get closer to the total station, as the shot gets shorter, they'll decrease because we're dealing with angles. And so as angles increase, right, your tolerance is going to increase as well. Let's start with a 200 foot shot. So typically in, uh, in construction, you know, we're gonna be using shorter baselines. We're not gonna be doing survey or civil baselines that, are, that can be, you know, a quarter of a mile, stuff like that. Typically on a construction site, we're seeing shots 200 foot, most likely less. We'll start with the 200. So probably low to the longer shots we'll take. The most accurate guns that we typically use in construction are called the one second guns. So we're doing that math. At 200 feet, that one second gun would have a tolerance in that shot of 1 64th of an inch. If we bump that up to a three second, kind of the middle of the road, the common uh, total station accuracy that we see, that same gun or that three second gun shoots at a 3 64th of an inch. 
And if we go all the way up to five seconds, we're still recording a tolerance of only 1 16th of an inch. So even at five seconds, your bubble is likely further out than what your total station is measuring. Now, if we come in and take it a step closer, right, come into a typical shot of 50 foot, say, and that's, that's much more reasonable because we have obstructions, we have other people working on site, so 50 foot um, is a much more typical shot that we see in building construction. That same one second gun is accurate to one 256th of an inch, right? The three second one does increase a little bit, but only to three 256th of an inch, and the five second gun is still one 64th of an inch. So even with a five second total station, the accuracy is not the weak link in your accuracy chain. So if there's one thing to take away from in this, in this whole discussion and with these examples is that check your rod calibrations, check that your setups are solid and make sure your gear is calibrated and then relax and lay out confidently. And of course, don't forget to smash the subscribe button so you're notified of the latest tips, tricks and pointers that we post here at That's The Point. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.